What's up guys, Zero Skater here, and tourney season is right around the corner. We got a brand new format to reveal today, so don't go anywhere. We're going to be talking all about Arsenal Format. If you're a fan of the channel, consider supporting me on Patreon. For as little as $1 per month, you can help me continue to bring you premier unmatched content. Unlock exclusive rewards by becoming a patron today. So Arsenal Format was created as a collaborative effort between myself and the TOs, with inspiration from community members such as Bryden and Calvin, most notably, as they have suggested similar formats in the past, but we took some ideas from them that we really liked, and we sat down and created Arsenal. So we thought it would be really cool to have a different format between the Summer of Legends and Winter of Champions you know, if they're going to be the two major tournaments that we have throughout the year, it'd be cool to switch back and forth so that it's not always the same standard conquest that we're used to seeing so far. So I'm really excited to try out Arsenal in the upcoming Summer of Legends, and you might want to get some practice in with this format because that tournament is coming up soon. But, as always, be sure to attack the like button if you enjoy the video, and subscribe for more unmatched content. And with that said, let's get on over and talk about Arsenal Format. All right, so here we are on good old Vorpal Board once again. If you're unfamiliar with Vorpal Board, I would highly recommend you go check it out. It's just a great online platform for playing unmatched, and it works great for these videos as well. So if you're interested, I do have an affiliate link in the description below. Go ahead and click the link to find out more. But let's talk about Arsenal. So Arsenal was created to be a best of two match format, which means you're going to play two games in a match, versus your standard best of three that you would see in Conquest. And in Conquest, the best of three creates a clear-cut winner. But in Arsenal, you might end up with a draw, right? You could go one and one in the game count with your opponent, but as long as your tournament structure supports draws and can handle them properly, that's not a problem. And what I love about Arsenal is it's very balanced because both sides are exactly the same. And that's one of the biggest criticisms I hear about Conquest format is that the leader and follower balance is off. And there are things you can do to tweak the balance, and but you'll never get it exactly the same because they are not the same. But in Arsenal, neither player has any real advantage. You could argue that there's some type of psychological advantage you could gain from one side over the other, but in reality, they are equal. And that's what I love about it, it's very balanced. So there are three phases to Arsenal format. The first phase being the fighter pick phase, and this is where you're going to be creating your roster of available fighters to use throughout the match. The second phase is going to be the fighter assignment phase, and this is where you're actually going to figure out which matchups you're going to be playing. And then the third phase is the map assignment phase. This is where you are going to choose map and starting position for the matchups to be played. So it's a three step process, it's pretty simple once you get the hang of it. And we're going to start off with the first phase, talking about the fighter pick phase. So the way the fighter pick phase is going to work is you're going to be hidden picking a roster of four fighters. Now hidden pick just means your opponent has no knowledge of who you're picking during the process. So you're going to take your card backs and you're going to put them face down in front of you. And both players are going to flip and reveal them at the same time, revealing their roster. Now... Let's say, for example, I want Yananga and the big three, right? Bigfoot, Sherlock, Medusa, because they're widely considered to be the best fighters in the game. Now, let's say my opponent also wants Sherlock and Medusa, and maybe they want Electra and Wukong. So we're going to flip these, so we put them down face down in front of us so we don't know what the opponent picks, and then we're going to flip them at the same time, and you're going to ban out any mirrored fighters. So if anybody picked the same fighter as their opponent, both of those fighters are banned out, they cannot be used during this match. So in this case, we're going to ban out Sherlock, we're going to ban out Medusa, that's going to leave me with Yananga and Bigfoot, and them with Electra and Wukong. Now we're going to repeat the process because we need four fighters in our roster and since we already have two of them we're going to be hidden picking two additional fighters this time instead of four 
So let's say that I go with Little Red and Beowulf, and they go with Little Red and Sinbad. So again, we already knew these were here. These other ones are played face down. We're going to flip to reveal. Okay, we mirrored Little Red, so she's going to be out. And now we add Beowulf to my roster, Sinbad to their roster. And we're going to hidden pick again for the last slot. If it mirrors, again, ban it out. Just keep repeating the process until you're left with four. So let's say I end up with Achilles and they end up with the T-Rex. So these would be our available fighter rosters to use during this match. And in the unlikely case that you keep banning out the same fighters over and over and over, and you run through the whole entire fighter pool, uh, it I really don't think it's ever going to happen. But if it does, just take all of the previously banned fighters and add them back into the available pool and continue the process from there. So you're going to keep going until you have four fighters each, and then that's going to bring you into the second phase being the fighter assignment phase. Now the fighter assignment phase is where things get really interesting because as I mentioned, it's a best of two format. So there's two games to be played. One player will get advantage on one game and the opponent will get advantage on the other. And if you haven't seen my previous video, I'd recommend you go check that out. It talks about competitive terminology such as advantage and meta and counter pick and some general game theory. It's really interesting to hear. But in this case, to clarify, advantage means your choice of both map and starting position. So you get full advantage. So I know that I'm going to get advantage in one game. The opponent is going to get advantage in the other. And what we're going to do is secretly choose one of the fighters from our roster and assign that fighter to one of the games. So I'm going to duplicate these card backs as reference. But we'll say on the left is the game with my advantage. On the right is going to be the game with the opponent's advantage. So I'm going to put a card face down to each of these simultaneously. So let's say I want Bigfoot for my advantage and Yanenga for my disadvantage, which would be the opponent's advantage. The opponent puts down Wukong for their disadvantage and T-Rex for their advantage. Remember, these are face down. We don't know what the opponent is choosing. We're going to flip and reveal all of them at the same time. So over on the left, I get advantage with Bigfoot into Wukong, which can help me maybe win an otherwise unfavorable matchup. That's part of why I put Bigfoot on advantage over here. Now on my disadvantage, I think Yanenga is pretty dang good overall as long as I can dodge Sinbad from the other side. So I think I can win even in disadvantage. And they put T-Rex thinking that, well, if they get map and get to start first, then they can be really aggressive and take out anybody pretty easily. So they're going to get to choose both map and starting position for T-Rex into Yanenga. Now, up until this point, neither player has had any additional information to use in order to make their decisions, right? It's all been hidden picks, and the advantage is split evenly at 1-1. One one. So again, it makes it a very balanced format. But we still need to figure out where you're going to be playing these matchups, so let's move on to phase 3, being the map assignment phase. So for the map assignment phase, the first thing you need to do is determine a leader and a follower. Now, don't worry, it's not the same as Conquest, uh, but it's still necessary. So you can do this by any means you guys agree upon, as long as it's random. You don't get the choice of leader follower, it has to be assigned to you randomly. So let's say we want to roll a die, and if it's odds, I will be the leader. So let's go ahead and roll. It's a one, it is odds, so I will be the leader. Now what that means as leader is that I will be playing my advantage game as game one, the opponent will be playing their advantage game as game two. Now, the first thing you need to do after you've determined this is do your map bans. Now, leader will ban first, then follower will do map ban, and then you're going to do map assignment where leader will assign and follower will assign. So it always goes leader follower in that order for all of these steps. But you're going to do map bans first, then you're going to do map assignment. Now, just to visualize this and show how it works, let's do it one at a time, even though you complete all bands, then all map assignments. It's just a little easier to show if we do it one at a time. So, since I'm going to have advantage for game one because I was the leader, the opponent is going to ban one map. 
So let's say they don't want me to play on Hanging Gardens, so they ban that out because they don't want me getting extra damage from a Bigfoot over Wukong. So they ban that out. Let's say I pick something like Heorot because it's a tight map and I think I can be aggressive and get a good shot to win. Now it's going to go uh, for game two. The opponent has advantage, so I'm going to be the one getting a map ban. Let's say I ban Raptor Paddock because we all know that's broken for T-Rex. So I'm going to get Raptor Paddock out of here, and they can choose from any of the remaining maps. Now remember, Hanging Gardens is still available for them to select because bans do not carry over to any other game in the match outside of that specific game it was banned for. They banned Hanging Gardens for my advantage game, but they can still go ahead and choose Hanging Gardens if they'd like because it's open and I banned Raptor Paddock. They could also choose Herorot because there's no rule about playing the same map that your opponent did because this is all done up front so there's no extra knowledge gained from gameplay so everything is open other than the one map that your opponent is banning for your advantage so let's say they actually do want to go to hanging gardens so they're going to assign hanging gardens for t-rex into yananga as their advantage and these are going to be the two games that we're going to play and then all that's left to do is to play them out and you're going to get one point for each game you win and that's either going to result in one player winning the match at a 2-0 or losing the match at an 0-2 or both players winning one game likely on their advantage game and ending up in a draw with 1-1 final score. So that's pretty much all there is to it but let's go ahead and talk a little bit about some last minute notes and a little bit of strategy so that you can figure out how to tackle this new format. So you might be wondering, well, what if you want to use this type of format, but you do want to do a best of three match instead of a best of two. Maybe you're running an elimination style bracket and that can't have draws. You have to have a winner so the other person is eliminated. Well, you can adapt this to become a best of three format. So all you're going to do is the fighter pick phase is the same. You're going to pick a roster of four. And then during the fighter assignment phase, you're going to assign a fighter for your advantage game, your disadvantage game, as well as a third neutral game. And the third neutral game is only going to be played if it comes down to needing a tiebreaker after the first two games have been played through. So if each player wins one, then you're going to finish it off on that third neutral game. So you'll assign a third fighter in this case. And then when you go on to the map assignment phase, you're going to have the leader ban an additional map for that third neutral game because follower sticking with tradition of conquest follower will get the map choice for the neutral game now even though follower gets the map choice here for the neutral game the leader will be getting position advantage so the advantage is split for the neutral game only it's not full advantage for either player it's split with follower getting map advantage and leader getting position advantage. So when you do your map assignment phase, when you do your map bans, the leader is going to have two bans. Again, they don't carry over, but they're gonna have one ban for the opponent's advantage game and one ban for the neutral game. Then when the follower is doing their map assignment, they're going to assign one map for their advantage game as well as one map for the neutral game. And then when they go to play it out, the leader will get the position advantage. And that's all there is to it. That is the tiebreaker game. Just remember the third game, that neutral game, is not going to be played. You don't get to pick the ordering. That's always going to be game three if it comes down to that. And it's just that the position and map advantages are split. So the leader gets position advantage. The follower gets map advantage. And that's it. I think it's still pretty balanced, um, there's still a ton of strategy and it's still pretty dang even, more even than Conquest because again, you don't get to straight counterpick your opponent. So talking a little bit about some of the strategy involved in mainly the pick phase but also the fighter assignment phase, um, there are a couple options. So what you can do because mirrors are always banned is you can intentionally try to pick the same fighters that you think your opponent is going to pick to act as a ban of sorts because there's no traditional bans in arsenal format like there is in conquest 
So if you think your opponent's going to pick Sherlock and you really don't want to deal with him, go ahead and pick him. Same with maybe Electra or Medusa, right? If both players end up picking the big three plus Yananga, let's say, as their first wave of fighter picks, they'll all get banned out. And then so then it's bumping down the power level of the fighters a bit if you're removing that top end of the fighters, you know, from the tier list. So that can make for a lot more variety in the matchups, which is a plus, because you might see some of the more mid-tier fighters being played because maybe the top tiers get banned out through the process of elimination. Now, there's no straight counterpicking in this format either because it's all hidden picks. So you're not going to get stuck with silver bullet matchups just because you didn't know how to navigate the pick ban phase like in conquest which unfortunately that can happen if you're not good at the pick ban phase in conquest it is kind of a game outside the game and don't get me wrong this is too this is definitely a game outside the game but i think it's a little more user friendly because you don't have to have perfect knowledge since your opponent doesn't have perfect knowledge either step by step as you go through it so again part of the strategy if you want to ban out fighters try to intentionally mirror and so if you have a fighter that is not a like top tier meta fighter that you're really good with and you feel confident into any matchup, maybe one of the things you want to do is ban out their counter. So let's say, for example, I love Yananga, right? And I want to play Yananga. Uh, but I know that Sinbad exists and I don't want to even run the risk of running into Sinbad. So why not go ahead and grab Sinbad? during my fighter pick phase, right? Because either he's going to get mirrored and banned out and I don't have to worry about him, or the opponent isn't going to pick him and now I have him on my roster and now the opponent can no longer pick Sinbad because you can't pick anything that is already locked into a roster. So it's almost like a win-win. Now the risk I run here is that they also picked Yananga and Yananga gets mirror banned out, so I have to get rid of her and now I'm left with Sinbad, but I don't even want to play Sinbad. I was just trying to pick him to protect Yananga. So this strategy works better with fighters that maybe are less meta because it's less likely to be picked and mirror banned out and it's less likely to be countered as well. So maybe a fighter like, I don't know, Moon Knight, you might be able to do this with really well, right? Like if you are really good and confident with Moon Knight into most any matchup. Maybe you want to just go ahead and pick Moon Knight alongside, let's say, Soon Wukong, because I imagine Wukong is a big counter to Moon Knight. So you grab Moon Knight and Wukong. Now you've protected your Moon Knight in a sense, and he's less likely to be mirror banned because your opponent probably won't pick him. So that's part of the strategy is you can kind of protect some of your main uh, fighters by either banning out or just stealing the counters to that fighter. So it requires some planning ahead of time, but you also have to be able to adapt because as you go through each phase of the fighter pick, you need to make sure that you don't end up with a really unfavorable roster because in the end, if you have one fighter that's bad against your whole entire opponent's roster, that's fine because you have four fighters to choose from during the fighter assignments. So you just simply don't assign that fighter that's going to be bad into all of their fighters. So you kind of got to play the odds a little bit during the fighter assignment phase as well. And you have to consider your advantage and disadvantage. So if you think there is a counter to your fighter, let's say a good example I'll give is Dracula. Let's say my Dracula, I am pretty confident in to most matchups, but I know Beowulf gives me a lot of trouble but i think personally that with a map like raptor paddock or yukon i have a strategy that dracula can beat out beowulf as long as i can get one of those maps so i'm okay leaving beowulf open and not having to grab him to attempt a mirror ban or to steal him because as long as i have drac on my advantage i don't care this is no longer a counter pick in my eyes so you need to consider that when you're making your choices because advantage plays a huge role in the outcome of any game. So somebody like T-Rex, 
might have some weaknesses, but with advantage, I think T-Rex is an absolute monster if you can get a map like Raptor Paddock. Now, keep in mind there's always that one map ban, so your opponent is likely to ban Raptor Paddock if you have T-Rex. But if you can find another map similar to Raptor Paddock that's really tight, that you feel really confident on, I think T-Rex can just demolish almost anybody. So, with that knowledge as well, when you see a certain fighter on the opponent's roster, when it comes time for the fighter assignment phase, you want to try to think about, okay, well, are they going to put that fighter on advantage or disadvantage? And if I think I can call it correctly, maybe I can line up one of my counter picks into that matchup and give me, uh, you know, flip the script, give me an advantage when I otherwise would not have. So... There's just a ton of strategy that goes into this, there's a ton of layers involved, and it's all so unknown. Because unlike Conquest, again with all the hidden picks, it's just too hard to really determine what's going to happen. So you're going to have to be able to adapt and just go step by step and hope that you get a uh, favorable roster and favorable matchups. But I really don't think anybody has this format anywhere near figured out at this point and I don't think it'll ever be completely figured out because there's just so many variables that can change things up and that is part of what makes Arsenal so great. So I think that's everything for the format in terms of the rules I will have the rules document typed up and linked in the description below and hopefully that answers all questions. But if there are any additional questions, of course, just comment on the video and, you know, let me know and I'll, I'll be happy to clarify anything that seems uh, unclear. But hopefully you enjoy the Arsenal format and I'm really looking forward to trying this out in tournament coming up soon. And that's going to do it for the video, everybody. I really hope you try out this Arsenal format and I hope you enjoy it. It's very much experimental at this point. We have not ran this for any official event yet. We've just done some behind the scenes testing so far and it's gotten a lot of good response from the limited testing that we have done. And so I, I think people are really gonna like it, but try it out for yourself. Let me know down in the comments what you think and I cannot wait to really stress test this in a big event. So it's gonna be pretty awesome. Um, if you like the video, again, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel if you are not already for more unmatched content. Uh, also, you can follow me on Twitch over at twitch.tv slash zeroskater12. I try to stream my live games, whether it be testing or ladder or whatever it may be. I try to stream at least once a week, if not more. So go follow me on Twitch if you want to catch me live and join in the chat. It's always a lot of fun. Uh, also, check out my Patreon if you'd like to, you know, give me some extra support. I would really appreciate that, but for, you know, just $1 a month minimum, it's not much, but it really adds up and makes a big difference to me. So, I appreciate all the support from everybody across all these platforms, and uh, I'm really looking forward to this Arsenal format in the next tournament. So, that's going to do it for today's video, everybody, but thanks again for watching. I'm Zero Skater 12 and I'll see you next time.